Hi everyone, this is Jack. You can also call me Hao Bai. Uh, I'm from uh, ZJUIUC Institute and I'm currently in uh, USA. You can contact me through these emails and I'll be happy if you are interested in my research topic. Uh, the topic we cover in this research is called a SLAM or Reality Taxonomy of ICP algorithm. Uh, it's a full synthesis actually. And um, as you can see, the two keywords here is firstly SLAM and then the ICP. And in the first uh, section, we're going to cover the ICP algorithm. Um, the ICP algorithm is a base solution for uh, surface registration. Um, to talk about for, uh, the, the surface registration, we first need to know about the image registration, which is um, uh, consider this scenario that you have a camera, but you have no uh, panorama uh, functionality but you, you still want to take a paranormal. So in this case, you use your camera to take two photos and combine them up like this one, right? So this is uh, equivalent to this problem that you have two photos in a different coordinate system, but for the same uh, object, right? In the same thing. So you want to combine them up into one coordinate system like this one, right? So this is called image registration. The surface registration is very similar to that. It's like uh, you have a, a lot of points in the 3D, uh, 3D system, and then you want these two objects to converge to each other. This is called surface registration. So these two, these two objects should be the same object as well, but sometimes they don't overlap uh, initially. So we want to match them. And for details about the ICP algorithm, please turn to my paper for reference. Uh, in the second part, we're going to talk about SLAM. Uh, SLAM is the abbreviation of simultaneous localization and mapping. So as you can see that the localization is just a, when you come from here to here, uh, say you have a sensor or the robot and the robot has a wheel and it goes from here to here. So localization means that the robot knows where it is in this mapped um, scenario, right? It knows that when it comes here, it's mapped here. So this is called localization. Mapping means just means you map every point in the real world into the uh, computer system. Yeah, the surface registration in SLAM is actually uh, um, divided into four steps, feature match, post estimation, and the other two steps contribute to the post estimation. Um, the loop closure and post estimation part uh, uses the SLAM, uh, uses the ICP algorithm because uh, post estimation is like you come from this point to this point and uh, this forms uh, and you need to know where you are, right? So you there may be some overlaps uh, between these two circles, right? For when it's here, it has a circle like this one, the sensor. And it, when it's here, it has a point cloud here and they have some overlap. And we want to use this overlap for surface registration. The loop closure part is very similar. So say that um, we're now going on a loop from here to here to here and back to here. And then when it's back here, it forms a loop. So we need to do the surface registration as well because uh, the circle here should be same as when the robot come back here, right? And that's the case. So in this paper, we basically introduce how to choose which algorithm, ICP algorithm to use in different SLAM tasks. Um, there can be many uh, categorizations of SLAM as it's a very large topic. Um, the thing we focus on here is uh, online and offline slam. So online slam means that, uh, let me give an analog. If you are uh, browsing a website and you watch a movie, uh, which means that you watch it online, then you cannot jump here and there, right? You need to load it before. It, it, it's online, right? But when you download the movie, it's, it's global. You have the global data, every, every, uh, every data point or, uh, every second in the movie is downloading. So it's called uh, offline, offline slam. 
And uh, the ICP algorithm for align uh, SLAM is uh, divided. Uh, it has some features. Firstly, um, the time is very crucial. Uh, the, uh, the, the performance is uh, crucial. Uh, because, for example, when you're driving your car and you want to park it somewhere in a parking lot automatically, you need to use a SLAM, right? You need to use SLAM and uh, it needs to localize where the car is and how it can be, uh, how it can be parked. But if the ICP algorithm here, it's online, right? It's slow, then it takes a lot of time to, to uh, figure out the strategy, which takes a lot of time. It's, uh, that's absurd. And uh, to address this problem, uh, scientists put up uh, two basic uh, ideas. Firstly, uh, soft ICP. So the basic uh, IC, uh, ICP algorithm uses uh, rigid transformation, but um, using elastic transformation, it saves a, a lot of time. Yeah, and it uses some methods like simultaneous global positioning and local blank. It's high tax to figure out how to reduce the time used. A second is called incremental ICP. Well, uh, when the car goes from this point to this point, there may be some overlap, as I mentioned. However, using incremental ICP means some points are discarded. Those without a high correlation is discarded. And only, only those of concern, or we, we say in the point model is, of, uh, is what we want to gain. So it's called incremental. Every time you only use those points of concern. Uh, and for offline SLAM, because you have global data, you can gain very good performance. And also you don't, you don't need to be very quick, right? Uh, you can just process the data after all the data collection is done. So you can use segmented ICP as you uh, segment the data points into segments. And then uh, you do ICP on each segment and then combine the data. And also like a coerce to find approach that uh, firstly you start with a very naive approach and then you refine, refine until it's very good. And the skewing, because you have global data, you can use the ICP algorithm firstly to de-skew the data. Uh, this, the data may have a lot of distortion and you de it and then you apply the ICP algorithm. It, this can be approached as well. Um, and the other category, uh, category is uh, SLAM with or without landmark. So landmark is um, like trees, tall buildings, obstacles, or some artifact landmarks. Like in this photo, you have a, in this diagram, you have a lot of landmarks like black here, green here, something like that. So we need to see that uh, the landmarks are actually sparse compa compared to the data point it, it, is, it locates in, right? The data cloud is very large, very dense, but the landmarks is very sparse. According to this feature, um, scientists use submaps to use these features. Um, however, as the landmarks are still something like uh, uh, something like points, right? It's still constructed by points. Um, it, we still need to use the most naive approach of ICP, which is called P2P, point to point ICP. And this does not have a very good performance. So later some scientists put up that uh, uh, we can use artifact lines to in these submaps, in these landmarks, for example, there is a bowl, then we construct a bowl the whole ball instead of the point cloud of ball to, uh, use, to use the P2L ICP, which is point to line SP to better find the uh, performance. And the second one is without landmarks. Without landmarks, actually you need to, you don't need to care too much about uh, uh, how to use the features because it's just normal slam. However, uh, compared to with landmarks, you need to, uh, have a better performance as well. Uh, although you don't have the landmarks, you want to gain the same result as you have the landmarks. So uh, scientists put up uh, such an algorithm that apply geometric matching first, then use the ICP. Because ICP is uh, more statistical, 
but use an introduction to the geometric matching will greatly reduce the uh, difficulty in training. Yes, that's all for my uh, topic. Thank you.